In this video, we're gonna talk about scoping using Hilt. Now, scoping in Hilt is pretty similar to how Dagger did it. The biggest difference here, I would say, is that it's actually the same as how Dagger does it. The difference is that Hilt generates a bunch of different scopes that are already pre-built and packaged. So as you already know, when we built our, we set up Hilt, we got the application class, we annotated it with at Hilt Android app or whatever that annotation was. And it, it what it does is it generates all the components for you. So it generates like an app component, it generates an activity component, a fragment component. Well, it's generating all those components and it's also uh, generating scopes for all of those components. So like, you know, the app component, for example, is automatically given the singleton scope. The singleton scope it will, live as long as the application is alive. So if you annotate a dependency with Singleton, it will exist as long as the application is alive. Um, the next kind of tier down is then the uh, activity retain scope. And by the way, if, you, if you're not sure about what I'm saying, we're gonna take a look at the docs in a second here, it's gonna make more sense. Um, but what I'm trying to explain is that it's a tier system. So the next tier down is the activity retain scope. That's one for, that would be essentially the same scope as a view model. A view model will, uh, stay alive longer than an activity, but it will die before the application dies if there's low memory conditions. Uh, the next scope down would be the activity scope. So the activity scope would only live as long as an activity. So activity dies, all the dependencies that are scoped with the activity scope also die. Next is fragment scope and so on. So I'm sure that was confusing to you that I'm, I said a lot of weird stuff there. And if you don't know anything about scoping, that was definitely confusing to you and you have no idea what I just said. So don't worry, we're gonna look at the documentation and I'm gonna explain this and then we're gonna go through, through an example and you will definitely understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I am in the Hilt section of the Android documentation, this component scopes kind of section. Now the biggest takeaway here, I guess, is what I, what I want you to understand is that this is like a tier system. So we have an Android class and a generated component, like I mentioned. So in the application class, it generates an application component class and that owns the singleton scope. In the view models, we have a activity retained component and that owns, or the or the, the scope that is associated with that is the activity retained scope. Uh, then down in the next kind of tier, you have activity, then you have the activity component, the activity, and then activity scope. So this is a, it's a tier system. Like the one that will live the longest is of course the application, therefore the singleton scope that will live as long as the application is alive. Then you have the view model, which lives uh, longer than an activity, but doesn't live as long as an application. So it's kind of like a tier system. Next is activity. Activity, if an activity is destroyed, guess what? The view model is not destroyed. So the activity dies before the view model. Uh, and then it kind of just goes down the line like that. So I, still, if you don't understand kind of how this is all coming together, we're gonna look at an example. The biggest thing here is that I want you to know this is a tier system, and these are the different scopes that are associated with the various tiers. So if you, if you annotate a, a dependency with Singleton, that dependency is gonna live as long as the application is alive. If you annotate a dependency with activity retained scope, that's gonna live as long as the view model is alive. If you annotate it with activity scoped, it's gonna live as long as the activity is alive. I think you get the idea. So now let's go and uh, take a look at an example. Okay, so I'm building on from the previous video where we did some field injection. We actually also did constructor injection, but I, I removed that other class that we were working with because it's not it's not really important. I just wanted to outline what, co what constructor injection is. Now that you know what it is we're just going to kind of move forward so i have i'm doing field injection like we were doing still printing out that log statement so now i want to i want to show you an illustration of the different scoping that you can do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to scope this with at singleton and i'm going to run it and you'll see that there is absolutely no issue with me doing that what all it's going to do is make this dependency live as long as the application is alive so there should be no issue so if i pull up the log still we get look i did a thing cool no problem now what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump down a couple tiers and i'm going to use a fragment scope so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write class you know my fragment extends fragment so i'm creating a new fragment class i'm not going to build a layout for it or anything i'm just going to create the fragment now i'm going to annotate this with at android entry point so i'm marking this as a potentially a potential user of dependencies so I can inject things into it. And now I'm gonna do inject late init var and do some class and inject that class. 
So what I've done here is just created a new entry point, a new thing that I've added to the dagger graph, which is this fragment. And I am in doing field injection and injecting this dependency that is marked as a singleton. Now remember dagger will check things at compile time. So I don't even need to like, I don't even need to do like uh, support fragment manager dot begin transaction dot replace. I don't need to bring this fragment into view because dagger is going to check this at compile time. That's one of the good things about Dagger. It doesn't check things at runtime. It checks things at compile time. So if you're gonna get an error, it's gonna be when you try and build the project, which is good because that way you're gonna get an error as the developer as opposed to a user getting the error, which would which would happen if it if it did the checks at runtime. So I'm injecting this, doing the thing, and everything. I think I already ran it, but I'll run it again and you'll see that um, everything is fine. So there we go. I'll actually pull the app on the screen here. We don't need to look at the log and just notice that it does actually run. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the scope. I'm going to change this or sorry, I'm going to change. Yeah, I'm going to change the scope here to uh, let's go down to activity scope. So if we take a look at the documentation again, move this over a little bit. So we have application, which is the singleton. I skipped over activity retain scope and I moved to activity scope. So I've, I've created this dependency and it's scope to activity scope. Now let's go back to Android Studio. Let's run this again and see if our app will build and everything is good. Yes the app builds, everything is fine. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the documentation and I'm gonna go down another scope. I'm gonna go down to fragment scoped. So if I change this to fragment scoped and I run this, what is gonna happen? So notice I get a compile time error. It, it brings up this, this uh, my application hilt component and it's giving me an error here saying, uh, activity scope may not reference bindings with different scopes. So the problem here is if I'm trying to inject something into an activity that is fragment scoped, that's not that's not good. So if I if I actually comment this out, I'm going to comment out some class being injected into the activity and I'm going to run this again and you're going to see that everything is actually fine, which is probably not what you expected. So I'm running it, the app is launching and there we go, everything is fine. So the reason it's fine is because the activity is part of the activity scope. If we take a look at the chart here, the activity is part of the activity scope, but my dependency is actually fragment scoped. And because this is a tier system, it's like a tier system that goes downwards. So like the, anything that is activity retained scope cannot be injected into something that's singleton scoped. Anything that's activity scoped cannot be injected into activity retained scope. Anything that's fragment scoped cannot be injected into activity scoped. And that's what's happening here. I have something that's fragment scoped and I'm trying to inject it into something that is activity scoped and that that's not okay. That's not going to work. But if I inject it into something that's fragment scoped, which is the fragment, everything is fine. So if I was to change this back to like activity scoped and I run it again, Oops, and I, sorry, comment, comment back in all of this stuff, and then I run it again, everything will be fine because I'm injecting it into something that's activity scoped or lower because fragment comes kind of after the activity scope. If you look at this chart here, so if I, if I have a dependency that's activity scoped, I can inject it into that, I can inject it into that, I can inject it into that or that, it kind of goes downwards. Now that we've talked about scoping and kind of this tier system and how it works on Hilt, how it generates components and ties certain Android things like activities, fragments, services, the application class to that component and to that scope. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna take another look at constructor injection. Since that's the type of injection that you're gonna be using pretty much all the time, we're gonna take another look at constructor injection and go through some of the issues with constructor injection and how to solve them. Because constructor injection doesn't always work. It's not always simple to do. There's certain cases that you'll run into and they're actually, they happen frequently and you need to know how to work around these issues and Hilt has built in systems for you to work around those issues. So I'll see you in the next video. Oh, actually I forgot just before you go, don't forget to go to codingwithmitch.com. If you're watching this course on YouTube, you can also watch it on my website and it will keep track of your progress. It's completely free. You just have to register an account. Just go there, uh, go to the course. It's easy to find. It's the courses page. You know, it's a very simple website. Find the course and you can you can watch it. It'll track the how far you get through a video, what video you're on, when you complete the course, all that kind of stuff. So um, that's gonna be it. I'll see you in the next one.